so small scale multipart measurements we have discussed and several methods are there for measurement of the small scale multipart uh, one is the direct rf pulse second is the spread spectrum and the frequency uh, domain channel sounding is the third one so these techniques are also called the channel sounding techniques uh, one thing we have to keep in mind that the uh, different techniques have the different advantages and disadvantages this particular thing we have discussed multipart structure is a very important for the small scale studying several uh, methods that is uh, these three methods are there and uh, uh, direct uh, uh, pulse system how it works that chat we have discussed in the uh, previous lecture and uh, on the digital, digital oscilloscope we are going to see that part and uh, uh, problems with this is the subject to reference subject to noise due to the wide pass uh, band filter required multipath resolution and the phase individual multipath components are not issued due to the use of the uh, envelope detector uh, so these are the uh, uh, disadvantages and for that only the spread spectrum comes in picture and spread spectrum, spread spectrum is nothing but the uh, any channel is there means modulated or unmodulated whatever signals are there these particular signals are added with the pseudocode uh, noise and pseudocode noise when we are going to add uh, the bandwidth goes on increases that is the one thing we have to keep in mind and uh, at the end pseudocode noise we have to uh, um, uh, separate out and for that particular we we know we must know that what type of the pseudocode is added so that is the thing uh, it, it is basically used for the uh, spying technique or we can say uh, for the security purpose only so Spread spectrum styling uh, correlator channel uh, sounding is there, and this problem is signal um, is wide band, but the received uh, receiver is the narrow band. Open signal is the wide band means. Ata ekanda modulated signal hai, kacha madhe pseudo code add kela, tar tisa parat bandwidth wad jaye. Ani bandwidth wad lile hai ki ti bandwidth recover karne sathi tumala pseudo noise mahi paaye jee kutra hai to. So carrier signal is spread over a large bandwidth by mixing with it the pseudo code noise and the sequence having three pre EC. The receiver signal is uh, desperate, uh, desperate using the same uh, uh, pseudo code that is the uh, pseudo random noise. Uh, the transmitter sheet clock rate is little faster than the receiver sheet clock rate. Um, the result is uh, the sliding correlator. If the sequences are not maximally correlated, then the um, mixer will further spread the uh, signal. So, spread spectrum, uh, spread spectrum technique we must know first. And it is the, it is the um, uh, pseudo random noise we are going to add, sliding a correlated channel uh, for the sound, sounding. These particular things they have given, and we have, we have discussed this particular means uh, signal is there. Then, here they are going to add the uh, a pseudo random noise uh, in this with the signal and uh, both are transmitted okay at the receiver side uh pseudo noise uh, means whatever the bandwidth is there minus two rc when the filter they are going to use which is the band uh, wide band filter and uh, pseudo noise generator is there that is added and uh, that particular noise is recovered in this and correlate correlation bandwidth we are getting uh, uh, 2 into alpha minus beta that is the narrow uh, band filters here used and then detector and the, then the display uh, storage as this works or uh, showing whatever the information uh, the cheap rate is rc is equal to 1 by tc that is the uh, time based conversion into the frequency based conversion rf bandwidth is 2 rc and the processing gain that is pz is equal to 2 rc divided by rbb uh so time resolution is delta t is equal to 2 tc and it is 2 by rc sliding factor is gamma is equal to alpha divided by alpha minus beta so alpha is the transmitter shifted and beta is the receiver shift uh spread spectrum the advantage is that improve the coverage range using the same transmitter power Transmitter receiver synchronization eliminated using the sliding correlator. Uh, disadvantage is the measurement. Mm, measurements are not made uh, real time in the other situation of the time required, and the phase uh, information is lost. Frequency domain based uh, channel sounding is because of the dual relationship between the time and frequency, it is possible to measure the channel. 
impulse response of the uh, frequency domain. So, vector network analyzer is used for this particular purpose, and these parameters to test the set use the monitor frequency response of the channel. Hello, Ishnevi. Hello. Vaishnavi? Hello, Vaishnavi? Hello. Vaishnavi? Yes, sir. Welcome to wireless mobile communication lectures. This is the first lecture, no? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you busy with your internship? Yes, sir. Okay. Where are where are you going to do the internship? Bangalore. Bangalore? Yes, sir. In which company? Actually, sir, my internship is online. I am doing a training classes here. Okay. Yes, sir. What type of training they are giving you? Uh, Java full stack. Okay, okay. So, uh, is there any uh, test or anything else you have to do a hands on uh, in training? Yes, sir. We have a uh, mock test, a uh, mock interviews also. In technology, in technology, whatever the Java you are going to uh, uh, train, they are going to train you on that yeah, particular. Yeah. Is there any answer? Yeah, yeah. They are uh, conducting uh, training sessions. Means they conduct uh, uh, programming uh, sessions also. Means they give us problem statements. And all they give us daily assignments. Okay, okay, very good, very good. Okay, okay, okay. At what time it starts? It depends, sir. Today I have a class at 10 30, uh, but before I was having class at 8 30 morning. Okay, okay. Uh, so we we have discussed about the first chapter completely, and we have started the second chapter, and it uh, in which the uh, path loss basically we are going to calculate, and uh, uh, a large scale path loss and the small scale uh, uh, path loss. This particular thing, small scale padding, it is known as. So we are going to uh, see the uh, small scale padding now, and whatever whatever the measurement techniques are there, this particular part we are going to see. Okay. Uh, Frequency sweeper scans at a particular frequency band by stepping through the discrete frequencies. This is this is the uh, frequency domain channel sounding, and uh, frequency domain channel sounding uh, shows this particular part that is uh, transmitter X of omega. And it is in the frequency domain only. Vector network analyzer sweep frequency oscillator, and here is the receiver. So S yes, parameter. Test set is there, and with the help of that inverse uh, DFT, they are going to calculate and whatever the response of the multipath channel for the uh, channel only H of T, we are going to calculate. So this is the frequency domain channel sounding. Uh, frequency domain channel sounding: the number of spacing of the frequency steps impact the time resolution and the impulse response measurements. Um, a response is converted to the time domain by using the inverse discrete, uh, discrete time uh, Fourier transform that is uh, uh, IDFT. DSP made a frequency domain channel sounding disadvantage system requires the careful calibration of what the transmitter and receiver as well of the uh, VNA that is vector network analyzer. System requires the uh, hand, uh, hand wired synchronization between the transmitter and receiver. Practical only. For the indoor channel measurements, non real time nature of the measurements. 
for time varying channel channel impulse response may change giving error miss uh, measurements parameters of the mobile uh, multi path channels the time dispersion parameter gross uh, grossly defined uh, quantifies the multi path channel determine the power uh, delay profile and the parameter include the mean access delay rms delay spread access uh, delay spread coherence bandwidth doppler spread and the coherence time the value of the time dispersion parameter also depends on the noise threshold if the noise threshold is set to low then the noise will be processed as a multi path and thus causing the parameter to go uh, to be the higher parameter uh everywhere the noise uh, threshold is there threshold means what that is the what is the table noise in that particular environment is nothing but the threshold noise so delay spread and the coherence bandwidth uh, we must know that what is the coherence bandwidth and uh, uh, what is the delay spread so describe the time dispersive nature of the channel in local area uh, a received signal suffers spreading uh, time uh, compared to the transmitted signal delay spread uh, range of few hundred nanoseconds for the indoor scenario up to the microseconds in urban zero um coherence bandwidth bc translates the dispersion uh, dispersion into the language of the frequency domain so uh, specify the frequency range over which the channel affects the signal spectrum nearly in the same way causing an approximate constant attenuation and a linear change in phase uh this particular things i think uh, only if you are going to read it then also understandable things are there uh, much more uh, means uh, problematic i don't think okay so the rms delay spread and the coherent bandwidth are inversely proportional to each other okay so um, coherent bandwidth is bandwidth transmitted by the transmitter that particular part is the coherent bandwidth and noise is get added in because of the medium and uh, how much is the noise added in the coherent bandwidth that they are going to tell so two things here we have discussed that is the spread that is delay spread delay spread is related to the rms delay spread um uh, of the signal and the second one is the coherent bandwidth so delay is related to the phase only when in case of the multi path uh, different paths are there and with the uh, different paths the signal is going to receive at the receiver side so uh, when the different path is there different delays will be there that is nothing but in terms of phase we are going to calculate it okay the range of frequencies over which the channel can be considered flat um uh, that is channel passes all the spectral component with equal gain and the linear phase is nothing but the coherent bandwidth uh, it is the definition that depends on the rms delay spread um two sinusoidal uh, sinusoids with the frequency separation greater than bc are affected quite differently by the channel so this particular part we have to we have to understand basically that is what is a coherent channel a range of frequency over which the channel can be considered flat आता एक रेंज ऑफ फ्रिक्वेन्सी घेतली तर चॅनल फ्लॅट आहे त्याच्यावरती म्हणजे देर इज अ नो चेंज इन द एम्प्लिट्यूड ऑफ द सिग्नल फॉर द डिफरंट फ्रिक्वेन्सीज बिकॉज बँडविड इज नथिंग बट द बंच ऑफ फ्रिक्वेन्सीज बंच ऑफ फ्रिक्वेन्सीज विथ एम्प्लिफाईड विथ द ऑल सेट ऍट पर्टिक्युलर गेन वी कॅन से दॅट इज नथिंग बट दी को हॅरंट बँडविड ओके सो टू सिनिसायडल विथ द फ्रिक्वेन्सी सेपरेशन सिनिसाइड विथ द फ्रिक्वेन्सी सेपरेशन ग्रेटर दॅन बी सी affect quite uh, differently by the channel so that particular thing also we 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 have to keep in mind so multi path f1 and f2 ratio and uh, uh, frequency separation that is f1 minus f2 will be there frequency correlation between two sinusoids 
zero is less than or equal to c r1 r2 is less than or equal to one if we define coherent bandwidth bc as the range of the frequency over which the frequency correlation is above 0.9 then uh, bc is equal to one divided by t uh, into sigma uh, that is sigma is the rms delay spread if we define the coherent bandwidth as the range of the frequency over which the frequency correlation is above 0.5 then bc is equal to one divided by 50 raised to sigma and this is called as the 50 percent uh, coherent bandwidth doppler spread and the coherent time uh, delay spread and the coherent bandwidth describe the time dispersive nature of the channel in local area they don't offer the information about the time varying nature of the channel caused by a relative motion of the transmitter and the receiver doppler spread and the coherent time are parameter uh, which describes the time varying uh, nature of the channel and uh, in in small signal region time varying nature of the channel caused by either relative motion between the base station and the mobile or by the motion of object in the channel are uh, characterized uh, categorized by the um, bd and tc so here they have given the information of the doppler, uh, doppler spread and the coherence time parameters we describe the time varying nature and the channel in the small signal region okay so uh, motion is depends uh, that is depends on what that is depends on the any object which is having the in motion in between the base station and the mobile uh, or the relative uh, uh, motion of the subscriber also doppler spread is ye apan yacha agodar pan thoda sa bollelo ahe doppler spread is nothing but change in frequency so measure of the spectral uh, broad, broadening caused by the motion um we know how to compute the doppler shift that is the fd okay so um a doppler spread bd is defined as the maximum doppler shift it is defined as the maximum doppler shift and it is equal to fm is equal to v by lambda what is this v by lambda so v is the velocity and lambda is the uh, signal wavelength if the transmitter signal bandwidth bs is large such that bs is very very greater than bd then um, effects of the doppler spread are not important so the spread is only important for the low bps uh, that is the uh, low uh, um, bits per second that is data data rate applications for slow fading channels okay so uh, it may happen that means doppler effect is advantages in case of the radar but uh, it, it is disadvantages in case of this particular uh, we can say mobile communication system because what happens whenever the impinging of the signals will be there uh, it has it has the uh, reverse that signals and this particular r according to whatever we can say the fd plus minus uh, adding in that particular signals and that is uh, effective when it is effective it is effective when um, bs is um, even it is not effective that is bs is that is signal bandwidth is very very greater than bd okay and bd is nothing but whatever the doppler spread is there coherent time is the time duration over which the channel impulse response is essentially invariant so this is this is coherence has the particular meaning and that is applicable and that particular thing whatever we are going to um now going to uh, um, uh, understand in case of the verbal that particular thing only is here for the coherent it may be the uh, coherent bandwidth it may be the coherent time okay so coherent time is the time duration over which the channel impulse response is essentially invariant if the symbol period of the baseband signal that is the reciprocal of the baseband signal bandwidth is greater the coherence time than the signal will distort signal channel will change during the transmission of the signal okay so uh, this particular part is there related to the coherent time okay so symbol period of the baseband signal 
is greater the coherence time okay then the signal will distort and the channel will change the during a uh, channel will change during the transmission of the signal okay so uh, this this may happen that is the coherent time tc is defined as tc is equal to 1 by fm okay and um, uh, it, it is uh, when the uh, signal is going to transmit in the medium at that time it may happen that the problem is there for this particular uh, coherent type also so essentially uh, we must we must understand that coherent time is essentially invariant that is impulse response is invariant uh, of that particular channel coherence time is also defined as tc is equal to root 9 divided by pi uh, fm square so it is equal to 0.423 divided by fm coherent time definition implies that the two signals arriving with the time separation greater than the tc are affected differently by the channel coherent time definition implies that two signals arriving uh, with the time separation greater than tc uh, are affected differently by the channel types of channel fading it is uh, small signal based on the multipart time delay spread small signal based on the doppler spread uh, it has two types that is uh, small signal um, padding that is time delay spread it is uh, flat fading and second one is the frequency selective fading so bandwidth signal is less than bandwidth of the channel in case of the flat fading and, uh, and delay spread is less than the symbol period uh, frequency selective fading bandwidth signal is greater than bandwidth channel and delay spread is greater than the symbol period uh, second one is it is it is related to the doppler shift. so two things we have to keep in mind that in this that is small signal padding has the two types one is the time delay spread that is because of the multi-part time delay spread and second one is the doppler spread so both has means uh, two types one is the uh, uh, fast padding another is the uh, frequency selective padding so fast padding in case of the doppler spread is high doppler spread coherent time is less than the symbol period and the channel variation faster than the baseband signal variation uh, these are the thing the three things are there in that particular case the fast padding will be there slow padding is the uh, um doppler spread coherent time is greater than the symbol period uh, channel variation is smaller than the baseband signal variation so in that case the uh, uh, these these particular things are affecting so it will give us the uh, a summary of the small signal padding which has the two types that is the um, multi-part time delay uh, spread and second one is the uh, doppler so um, multi-part time delay spread has the flat padding as well as the frequency selective padding and the doppler has the fast fading and the slow spreading okay and it depends on the coherent time and the symbol period that is the main part in case of the doppler spread also classification of the multipath channels depending on the relation between the signal parameters um, bandwidth and the symbol period and channel parameters different signal undergo the different type of padding uh, based on the uh, delay spread the types of uh, small scale padding are flat padding and the frequency selective padding Based on the Doppler spread, all types that is the fast padding and the slow padding. That particular part we have we have discussed in the previous. Uh, uh, the flat padding, uh, in case of the uh, multipath padding, or uh, multipath delay, occurs when the amplitude of the received signal changes with the time. Uh, when the symbol period of the transmitter signal is much larger. 
then the delay spread of the channel bandwidth applied signal is narrow okay so it's it's a it's a whatever the terminology is here used this particular are related to the bandwidth and the whatever we can say the time domain response and frequency domain response only the channel has a flat transfer function with almost a linear phase thus affecting all the spectrum uh, spectral components of the signal in the same way uh, fading is nothing but the effect means there is the effect of the of the uh, medium on the channel how the particular are taking place that is the, in case of the flat fading that is amplitude of the received signal changes with the time that is the one thing uh, second thing in symbol period of the transmitted signal is much larger than the delay period uh, of the uh, channel uh that is nothing but the bandwidth of the applied signal is narrow channel has the flat transfer function with almost linear phase and thus affecting all the spectral components of the signal in the same way may cause the deep uh, uh, phase increase the transmit power uh, to compact this situation so what is the what is the uh, corrective action that is transmit power is increased with the, uh, for the uh, in that situation so flat padding has s of t is the input signal r of t is the output signal and the impulse response of the medium we can say that particular hp of uh, t comma tau so occurs when vs is very very uh, less than the bc where bc is the coherent uh, bandwidth and bs is the signal bandwidth so signal bandwidth is less than bc at that time it occurs and the time symbol period that is ts and the delay uh, delay spread that is sigma or tau so ts is very very greater than uh, uh, sigma tau then also it happens that is the flat padding happens amplitude of the received signal changes with the time that is the one thing and the symbol period means uh, that particular is uh, we have we have discussed about frequency selective fading in which a channel is not a uh, flat fading uh, channel is called the frequency fading because of the different frequencies within a signal are attenuated differently by the mrc occurs when the uh, spread is greater than greater than the symbol period a uh, symbol phase dispersion occurs when the channel multipath delay spread is there and the greater than the symbol period so symbol phase time dispersion and channel induced uh, inter symbol uh, interference induces the inter channel that is isi inter channel interference uh, inter symbol interference is there so bandwidth of the signal s of t is wider than the channel uh, impulse response uh it is the channel the frequency selective fading has the channel is not uh, uh, flat or fading is called as a frequency selective fading because of the different frequencies within the signal attenuated differently by the mrc mrc is uh, the uh, combination ratio it is the uh, maximum combination ratio and uh, that is that is of the all the signals we can say uh, when a channel multipath delay is spread greater than the symbol period at that time the frequency selective fading happens bandwidth of the signal uh, is s of t is wider than the channel impulse response 
wider than the channel uh, uh, impulse response, then it happens. The frequency selective fading causes when the BS is greater than BC. Uh, symbol bandwidth, BS is the symbol bandwidth and the BC is the coherent uh, uh, bandwidth. Uh, tau is the delay and this is uh, the coherent bandwidth. Uh, TS is the symbol period and uh, sigma tau is the delay. So, causes the distortion of the resource baseband signal causes the inter-symbol interference. So, these two things we have to keep in mind when the uh, when there is the frequency selective fading comes in. So, fast fading, the rate of change of the channel characteristics is larger than the rate of change of the transmitter signal. We will take uh, into consideration the channel it changes during the symbol period. Channel changes during the symbol period and the channel changes because of the uh, receiver motion. The coherent time of the channel is smaller than the symbol period of the transmitter signal. Then the fast padding happens. When fast padding happens, BS that is bandwidth of the signal is less than the Doppler spread and TS that is symbol period is greater than TC that is coherent bandwidth. Slow padding rate of channel uh, rate of change of the channel characteristic is much smaller than the rate of change of the transmitter signal. Uh, occurs when the BS is greater than BD and uh, TS is less than TC. BS is bandwidth of the signal, BD is Doppler spread, TS is symbol period, and the TC is the coherent bandwidth. So, uh, what you do that is uh, here are some uh, terminologies and these particular terminologies are not, uh, we are not familiar with these terminologies. Uh, we will take one more lecture uh, of this particular fading techniques and what is particular fading techniques and what is this particular symbol. We can correlate these symbols with the day to day any uh, uh, things then also uh, I will I will discuss with you. Uh, in order to get, uh, we can say, the better understanding of these particular things, okay. So, uh, we'll stop here and uh, uh, we'll, we'll uh, see in the next lecture.